chemical cell is made by placing two different metals in a salt solution, which is known as an electrolyte, and connected with a wire circuit. The electrolyte completes the circuit by allowing the charged particles to flow. You need to remember that electrons flow through the wires and ions flow through the solution. An electrochemical half cell is made by placing two different metals in two beakers with an electrolyte and connected with a wire circuit. The filter paper, which connects both of the solutions, acts as an ion bridge. This completes the circuit and allows the ions to flow. So when we're given a diagram of a circuit, we should have two labelled metal rods and in this case we're looking at magnesium and copper. You want to use page 10 of your data booklet and identify the position of both of these metals. Metals always flow from the metals which are higher in the electrochemical series to metals which are lower in the electrochemical series. That means on the circuit, the electrons are going to move from the magnesium to the copper. In past paper questions, you'll often be asked about the size of the voltage. What you need to know is that when you select both of the metals in the electrochemical series, the bigger the gap, the bigger the voltage. The same thing goes, the smaller the gap, the smaller the voltage. This past paper question is from the National 5 2018 Multiple Choice 19. Which of the following metals, when connected to lead in a cell, would produce the highest reading on the voltmeter? You may wish to use your data booklet to help you. So we need to identify the position of lead in the electrochemical series and it wants the highest reading. So remember, the bigger the gap, the bigger the voltage. If we look at the positions of all the other metals alongside lead, we can see that lead has the biggest gap. So therefore, multiple choice answer A is the correct answer. This past paper question is from the National 5, 2014, multiple choice 18. The apparatus below was set up. We have metal X and we have metal Y. Which of the following pairs of metals would give the highest reading on the voltmeter? Remember, the bigger the gap, the bigger the voltage. When we look at all the different combinations, we can see that the correct answer to this is multiple choice answer B. When we look at magnesium and silver, it has the biggest gap, so would produce the biggest voltage. This past paper question is from the National 5, 2019, written 10A. I shouldn't set up an electrochemical cell using solutions of iron 3 chloride and potassium iodide. Name the piece of apparatus which is labelled X. We have the part which connects both of the solutions together and that is known as an iron bridge. Part B to the 2019 paper asks us to, on the diagram, draw an arrow to show the path and direction of the electron flow. You may wish to use the data booklet to help you. So when we look at page 10, we're wanting to look up the two metals which are provided on the diagram. The only metals which are provided on the diagram are iron and potassium. Remember, electrons flow from metals which are higher in the electrochemical series to metals which are lower in the electrochemical series. This means that they're going to move from the potassium to the iron. Remember, the question wants us to look at the path of the electrons. Electrons flow through the wire. So we would need to make sure that it passes through the voltmeter on the diagram. This past paper question is from the National 5, 2019, multiple choice 8. Several conductivity experiments were carried out using the apparatus below. Identify the experiment in which the bulb would light. Now remember, conductivity is the flow of charged particles. So what we need to make sure is that they only conduct electricity when in a solution or when molten. And this is because the ions are free to move. 
So when we're looking at A, we've got solid copper sulfate. The ions would not be free to move, so it would not conduct electricity. For B, we've got copper chloride solution. Remember, solution ends in ions, which means that the charged particles would be able to flow. And then we also have molten sodium chloride, which means that it's going to be hot liquids and the ions again would be free to move. So the correct answer to this is multiple choice answer B. Thank <laughs> you.